married people try to tell me, and I had, you know, my parents and other mentors and people in my life that were trying to instill things in me, and, but you're, you know, you understand, you were young once, right? Maybe you're young right now, and I was young, and it's just like, whatever, and I'm, it's exciting, but from this day forward, and we're, as we start a series over the next few weeks together, is this reality that wherever you're at in your stage in life, whether you're married, you're single, you're divorced, you're widowed, regardless of what stage, that all of us have together is from this day forward. That we can't go back, but we can go forward, and that's all we have. And this series hopefully will help all of us to get better in our relationships, get better in our, particularly our marriage relationships, or if you're planning and wanting to be married uh, for the first time or again, uh, that, that it would, you would get a sense of what you could do to get prepared for, for that day, for that moment, for that time where you make those kind of vows to actually move forward. Let me, let me say it this way. So from this day forward, this is all we have. Is, so all we have is today, right? Because today is our present. Today is my present. Today is your present, which will soon be our past, which will show up in our futures. You tracking with me on that? All we have is today that very shortly will become our past. And all of us know all too well that our past shows up in our future, doesn't it? And so all we have is to go from this day forward is the things that we're gonna put into today that we're gonna sow, if you will, to use one of God's terms and principles, it's a farming term, to put into our lives today. Whatever we sow into our, our present will soon become our past, which we all know shows up in our future. But here's a funny thing that I thought like 13 and a half years ago was that, that today is my wedding day and my past is my past and it's gone, <laughs> right? Any other married people with me thought like everything in your past just gets erased, it's like a clean start and we got this new marriage thing, right? Yeah, you, all, you just all left me out to dry there. Like nobody agreed with me. <laughs> nobody, not, not even my wife agreed. <laughs> like... Single people, let me just clue you in here. Us married people believe to this idea that our past wouldn't show up into our future, but let alone here I am 13 and a half years later, and uh, my past shows up in my future, shows up in my present day. But all I have is going forward. So that's what we're going to be talking about for the next few weeks, talking about all sorts of topics, about how to, how to, how to uh, deal with sexuality, how to uh, deal with relationships and all of the communication and expectation. And just we're going to try to cover everything under the sun when it comes to uh, going forward and to make our futures better because of what we're doing today in our present. So today is for single people. So single people, just anybody who's not married. So you can be engaged, you can be dating, you can, you can be divorced if you're a single person. So uh, uh, wink, wink, I think all of us married people might benefit as well from it today. Um, so just stick with me if you're married. But today is for single people. Single people who actually want to grow in your relationships. You actually want to maybe one day get married for the first time or get married again and you want that to be awesome and you want it to be something you're looking forward to and you're planning and preparing for. If you're a single person and you're just out to date and to have fun and have casual relationships and no commitment, this is probably going to be the worst message of your life. So um, it, just trying to be honest up front for you. So if that's, your, if that's you, I hope you tune in and maybe just kind of log it to the back and if there's one day in your life that you want to do something different from this day forward in your life that you can remember some of these things that God would be sharing with you this morning. So here's the deal that we're going to talk about, that, that as single people, that we believe there's a right person. And I'm going to talk today about the right person myth. Just honest, let's just have a moment of honesty, will you, with me? When you were, get, you're, whether you're single or not, if you're married now, you're getting married. When you were in that preparation stage of dating and getting engaged, you were looking for Mr. or Mrs. Right. That was on your mind. You were thinking, you were looking for. Let's just be honest here. You're just like, yeah, I'm looking for the right person. <laughs> Found it. All right, we got to, yep, we quit looking. I feel like I didn't get a full honest participation right there on that one. Okay, but there's this right person myth, and 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 the myth is is because you're just gonna look for that right person, and when you find that right person, you'll know because they'll be sparkle. The sun will shine brighter, because you'll be in love. <laughs> right? You'll be in love. When I saw Amy for the first time, it was actually in this lobby. We didn't know each other. She knew of me. I had no idea who she was. I saw her walk by, and I was in love. 
I had not spoken a word to her. I'm like, I literally asked my mom, I'm like, who's that girl? Because I'm in love. And I was over in the Seattle area. She was actually going to college over there. And so and then I met her uh, at the college that I went to. It's just, it's a long story, but a beautiful story. And I saw her from a distance. And then she had no time for me. And then I, <laughs> anyways, it's a God thing. Anyways, she's, she's, she's a wise woman. And so I tracked, I stalked her. I got her phone number. Because that's what you do when, you know, you're in love. Because we had a thing going on. Like, she didn't know we had a thing, but we had a thing. Because she was the right one for me. And I just needed to tell her that. But I didn't for the, in the first 10 seconds. I waited a couple dates. But anyways, here was, my, here was my right person. You know, we had a thing going on. When I called her out of the blue to, like, cold called. She didn't know I was calling. Called her. We talked for, like, five minutes. That's it. I called her. This is all I had to go on to get a date. I said, we have a thing. You're from Spokane, and I'm from Spokane. So we should go out. That's it. That's all I had. That's, that's all I could work on. I just went. But we had a chemistry, right? You're looking for that right person, and as we laugh along. You know, I laugh along, but I felt like in the moment that was good. Like, that was the right thing. And then you're like, but we have a song. And the other day, I left his house, and I got in my car, and I turned my car on the radio, and our song was playing. You know? Like, it must be the right one. You know? Like, I, I, when we go out to eat, we ordered the same food. You know what I mean? That's, the right, that's how you know it's the right person. We have this thing in our culture, because here's what the myth really is, is, is the right person. When I meet the right person, everything will be all right. That when I meet Mrs. Wright or Mr. Wright, that they will just make everything all right in my life. And I am on the hunt. I am on the, on the search for them. And as soon as I discover them, they'll be everything I've been missing in my life. And they'll be complete in all the ways I'm not. And they'll just make everything sparkle and perfect in sunshine and rainbows. It'll be great. As you sit here today and as you think that through and it's on a screen and you're just kind of maybe in a different spot of motion, you're like, that's, I don't even know if that's, you know, you're like, that's not true. But then in the moment of the emotions and in the, the height of the, the romance and the chemistry and the love we have, you know, and it's, and it's, we go on a date and we can share a dessert. Like that's, it must be a sign from Jesus, you know? And so we, we think, if I meet the right person, everything will be all right. And single people, I, I was there too. Um, and so I get this, but your motivation level right now to like do what I'm going to talk about for the next few minutes is like the lowest it'll ever be in your life. <laughs> just because if you've never been married before, there's, you just don't understand. And us married people are trying to communicate and it's not like I got things perfect or dialed in or know everything or, or, or any of that, but it's just the motivation to work on things is just at the lowest level because we have this going on in our lives. We have finding the right person versus becoming the right person in your life. And your motivation right now as a single person, and I was there too, is to look for and to hunt for and to seek after and find the right person. And your energy and your effort and your motivation is all about the hunt and the search and how do you, how do you find the right person? Where do you find the right person? Is it, on, is it online now? Is it an app? Are we swiping? Are we going to, do we still try the bars? Do I go to church? Am I going to the gym? I'm trying to find a person that works out, but then you go to the gym. You're like, are you just working out? Are you just here to meet people? I can't really tell because you don't really work out, but you do talk to people a lot. And so that's maybe a clue. And so you're like, where do I go? And it's hard to find a godly man. And how do I find a godly man? And is he, is he going to be trustworthy? And is it, can I, can I, can somebody vouch for him? Can I get a personal reference from you? Can I talk to your per previous employment? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There's a lot of energy and effort in our culture to find the right person. And how do you find the right person? You can read blog articles and tips and magazine articles and where to look for them. And if you're looking for this kind of guy or this kind of gal, and this is what you should look for. And I mean, there's a lot out there. And then you go to here about becoming the right person. And you look into our culture and you look into the motivation level and the people that are single and, and you talk with them, there's not a lot of conversation around, become, around becoming the right person. And if you're a God follower, if you're a Jesus follower, he's got like, like if you go to his word, he's got like zero. I mean, if you find something, let me know. He's got zero on finding the right person strategies. Like I don't know where there's a find the right person strategy from God. But as I read his word, 
And as I follow him, and as he talks to me, his spirit lives inside of me, there's a ton on becoming the right person. Like, a bazillion things on becoming the right person. And so, this, what this does is, is it transitions from putting all the onus on the relationship on the other person. Because as long as I find the right person, they will make everything right. And it transitions it to me and my responsibility in the relationship and becoming the right person. Which a little sidebar here. Starts in, 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 as soon as you meet the person, it starts in the relationship to becoming the right person. And single people, it doesn't end when you say, I do. It really just begins at that point of continually becoming the right person. Because if you're still living with looking for and finding the right person as a married person, a lot of times that's why people end up splitting and separating and having a tremendous amount of struggles is because they keep living out the myth that the other person is the right person and they just will make everything right, but yet they fall short of that expectation. They don't come through and everything's not right, so they must not be the right person for me. So here's our big question for today, for all of us. Really, it really is for all of us, but particularly for you single people. Are you becoming the person who you are looking for is looking for? You want to write that down? There's message notes in the app. You want to write that down? Are you becoming the person who you are looking for is looking for? Let me say it a little bit more clearly. Are you working on your own stuff? Are you working on your own stuff? Are you allowing God to work in your life for you to become the person that, that God wants you to be? Is it continual progress? Because if you are, are looking for Mr. Right, and they're looking for Mr. Right, and then you get those two people together, and then they don't, aren't Mr. and Mrs. Right, then it's kind of chaos. But if you both are becoming the person who you are looking for is looking for, as you both are working towards saying it's a beautiful thing. And you will, you, will be, you will find somebody, if you're working and becoming the right person, you will find somebody who is as well working to becoming the right person. That's just how God works. And God has a ton of help for you in this. And we're going to look at something here together in just a, just a minute. But um, I want to invite somebody to the stage to share her story of doing this, of becoming the right person versus finding the right person. So would you invite, uh, as, as Darian, come on up here. Would you give her a big hand? Darian's going to share her story this morning. I asked Darian to come and share because um, she's had a, a big transformation in the, in the last about three years. So would you just share with us a little bit about where you were about three years ago? Yeah, so three years ago, um, I had just moved back from Seattle. I was going to school at the University of Washington, and I moved back for a boyfriend who I dated in high school and I thought was worth more than education, more than experience in a new city. Um, and from there, I moved back, and two weeks later, we ended up breaking up. And that sucked because you, I worked so hard to get into school. I loved Seattle, and I thought he was it for me. Um, but that left me feeling defeated because I gave up my morals, my beliefs, everything I worked hard for, everything that made me, me. Um, I gave it all up, and we broke up. So that kind of sucked. Can yeah. I say sucked up here? Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> it sucked. Uh, so. I haven't seen the official list of things you can't okay. say. As long yet. as yeah. there's not a list of here. Okay. Um, so when I heard this message, it was worded a little differently, but be the person the person you're looking for is looking for. And it's so simple because at that time, that was not who I was. I look in the mirror and I'm thinking, you're not confident. You don't have the self-esteem, the drive, the motivation, any of that. Um, and you had shared with me before, too, just at that stage, you kind of felt hopeless. And yeah. just everything that you knew about life, school, and, and the relationship was all gone. And now, and news back to, back to Spokane, so a different city, and now what? Absolutely. And I had no faith. I wasn't a Christ follower at the time. I kind of strayed away from that as a child. Uh, so my biggest step was, where am I going from here? Yeah. Um, so three years ago, you came on a Sunday with your mom. And, and, and my stepdad, and stepdad, he asked me just one day, do you want to go to church with us? And I was like, it's only an hour, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, how long is this? How in, long is the suffering? Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, then yeah. we get to go get breakfast, and, and then, then everything's there's free food. Fine. Yeah. That is a great strategy, too, if you're trying to con someone into coming. Yeah, it's food. like, suffer for an hour, and they'll give you some food. The all right, food. sounds good. The breakfast good. will come, and the, that's all I expected. I didn't expect that this message would change my life. Um, and you showed up on the day on the where day. we were talking about this exact same subject three, three and a half years ago. Exactly, and it's so weird huh. because, like, where you are in your life, God sends a message directly to what you're going through, and it was just 
So what happened awesome. that day and, and right afterwards? That day, I kind of took a, took a look inside and I thought, who I am now is not who I would expect my future husband to want to be um, with or be proud of being with. Uh, so I started working on my faith and uh, accepting God back into my life, of course, was the biggest step. But then I started having more faith in myself, um, whereas I didn't have that before. I didn't have that confidence boost anymore. So I started working a little bit harder and harder, and things got pretty great. It all just fell into place. Um, I'm married now. I met a husband who, what am I trying to say? Yeah, you um, got back into school. I got back into school, just kind of worked on myself. I started taking that time of being single and working on it as a time to provide and be ready for who I'm about to meet soon in the future. Um, and I just, I focused so much on myself that I almost missed meeting my husband. Yeah. I didn't even realize that he was the one I was looking for because it didn't become the mission to look for somebody anymore. It, it was more about fixing myself and so you got back to school you met Damon met Damon yes yes and didn't miss him so that's good I didn't I didn't I he ended up having to train me at my job so I kind of was stuck with him um <laughs> followed him around you know <laughs> that worked out pretty good yeah exactly and, and I was so caught off guard because the first time I met him he kind of like cocks up and he says something funny like I run this place and I'm like Ew, <laughs> you're kind of weird. <laughs> That's a weird thing to say. But since then, I can't tell you how many weird things he said that I just adore. And like, that's my person. That's he's my weird. We're yeah. weird together. So. And so you guys have got married. We got married. You um, got baptized. We got baptized. Uh, I was pregnant at the time, so it was kind of symbolically as a family, uh, who we believe in, who got us here, who we're following. So we all got baptized. Um, and now, and now we have a beautiful boy. I don't know if you hear him back there. He's the one giggling. Yes. Um, it's Wonderful. just amazing because I totally think that I had to take the time of being single and being knocked down um, to just kind of rebuild myself. And I was totally prepared to meet my husband at that time. Right. Would you give her a big hand? Thank you. Yeah, it's super powerful. From this day forward is all we have. And as like Darian was sharing, she had from that day forward, she couldn't go in the past and change the things with her schooling and, and, and relationship, but she had moving forward. And so she chose to move forward and to become the person that the person she was looking for would be looking for. And it's just how God works and, and, and designed us in relationship as, as she was just moving through life and running through life. All of a sudden she looked over and there's somebody moving through life and running through life at the same pace and at the same you know, place in life and stage and values and faith. And so, so they just looked over at each other and said, hey, let's do life together. And they began to, to move uh, forward in their life. And so that's what, that's what God has designed us to do. And we get all caught up in this hunting for the right person because they'll make everything right. And so here's what I want us to do is just take a few minutes and look at, at, at a place in Scripture, 1 Corinthians 13. And it's a familiar place. And it's a lot of times it's used, used in a wedding situation, right? We talk about love. How many of you had a, a part of that or maybe a verse or two in your wedding? You're, if you remember that far back, you remember a few of you? Okay. So it's just something that gets quoted and said because it talks about love. But it's really for all relationships, it's really for all relationships. So if you're single and you're not even in a relationship right now, you don't even look to date, you can practice this today with all of your relationships because it's really good for all of us. So let's look at it. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 says, Love is patient. Love doesn't pressure the other person. That's what patience means. It means to not put all this pressure on the other person demand of them. Love is someone who says, I'll wait and be patient. Is that long enough for all of us there? <laughs> it's, it's about three seconds and it gets real awkward. But it's patient. It's different than a lot of our lives. You talk about putting pressure on people and you got to perform and you got to, you know, conform and you've got to do this or that and I require of you and you're not quite the right person because I have a list and I was told to make a list and I got things and I'm going to be, love is patient. Love is kind. Love is considerate of the other person, God says. And this is so huge 
for, for every relationship, but particularly a marriage relationship, that you're not part of the other person's story of regret. That you have a consideration for them. You don't live life in such a way and you don't go about dating and, and, and a, in a marriage relationship where you're, you're the primary source of the other person's regret. That you have kindness and consideration for them in our lives. And then it goes on, love is, is not envious. It's not jealous. I heard this and I thought it was really good about just, just the definition of envy and jealousy is I feel bad about myself so I'm going to try to make you feel bad about you. And maybe you grew up in a, in a, in a, relation, in, in a household with a, where your parents were just always tearing each other down and you just saw that and witnessed that and you thought that was normal and so you're kind of put off to marriage or that's just kind of your, your mindset of going into relationships is, is there's a lot of envy and jealousy and just tearing of the other person down and, and that's not love. God says, God says that love does not envy. Love does not boast, is not proud. We have, we have a great and horrible thing in our culture. It's the one-up stories. Because I love people sharing stories, but then we try to outdo each other. Right? You know what I'm talking about? You're, someone's telling a story about how they got a great deal at something at the store, and you're like, oh, yeah, you got 30% off? I got 50% off last Tuesday. Really? You know, amazing. I, I can't believe you would pay, like, that much. You should wait till it goes on sale because I got more, you know? Oh, you, you ran a race? Awesome. You ran 10-minute miles? Cool. Yeah, one time I did a race, I did, like, nine-and-a-half-minute miles. You, me. You know, you, me, like, right here. Really? Awesome. Okay. So you, you, uh, you, you, um... Your, your dad fishes? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you know, you're on a date getting to know somebody. Yeah, yeah, my dad fishes too. He got a bass. It was like this big, you know. <laughs> Do you, you know what I'm saying? We have this whole like boasting and, and, oh, you've had a bad day, honey? Oh, my day was worse. Let me tell you about my day. I mean, we do it in the negative too. Like, oh, you're feeling bad? Oh, I feel the worst. Like, we try to one-up each other all the time. Um, I mean, you know. I don't even have this dialed in. A Amy and I were on, on a trip this weekend, and so we stayed over. We drove in from so Soap Lake this morning, and Darian and Damon, they just moved to, to Davenport uh, for his job, and so they drove in from Davenport and made effort, and I'm like, yeah, that's appreciated. I drove in from Soap Lake. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm doing a one-up story. She's like, well, your drive was longer. I'm like, oh, geez, you know, like, no, you just don't do that. Like, I did that an hour ago, right in that lobby. Like, love doesn't boast. It's not proud. What do you do? Someone shares a story and you go, wow, that's awesome. That's amazing. Oh, your day was hard? Tell me about it. It was difficult? Oh, let me, let me hear some more about it. Like, we got this whole boasting and proud thing down, but love is, does not boast, isn't proud. Love does not demand its own way. Man, just let that sink in. Love does not demand its own way. You ever been in a real controlling relationship? No nudging, no none, none of that right now. <laughs> Single people, if you find yourself with somebody and you're dating and it's always with, you got to control and the time frame and the structure and the, we can't do this, we can't do that. You're like, but yeah, but she loves me. Like, love does not demand its own way. I'm not saying we don't have expectations for one another and there's not responsibility in relationship, but you know there's a line where it crosses over from just care and concern and love for one another and healthy boundaries to demanding and controlling and dictating. And there's a boundary there. Love does not cross over that boundary. Love does not demand its own way. It allows freedom for the other person to be the other person. Single people, as, as, you get, as you get married, you're going to have to figure out as two become one, and there's a special union between what God has designed for marriage, that two become one, and there's, there's two different kind of people, and then they become one, but yet there's this, there's this, I have to allow my wife to be her and her own interests and hobbies, and they're different than mine. We have a lot of overlap, and we have a lot of fun together and shared interests, but, you know, she likes to do nails, you know? Like, I got to let her do nails and, and have fun and do girl stuff, and I don't get that, but then she got, you know, let us do our boy things and, and uh, tell fart jokes. You know, it's just like how it goes in life. I couldn't think of another boy thing right off the top of my head. <laughs> must be the first thing. All right. But you know what I'm saying? When it crosses over that boundary of just like healthy 
boundary of, of, of care and concern and, and responsibility and structure in relationship to demanding, to controlling, to, to dictating. And verse 7 says this about love. Love is always supportive, loyal, hopeful, hopeful, and trusting. That single people, if you find yourself in a relationship and you find yourself telling your girlfriend or your, your, your guy friends you know, about your, your person you're dating or person you're about ready to engage, you know, get engaged to or are engaged to, and you say, yeah, yeah, you know, I know he loves me, but I just I have a hard time trusting him. A time out here. <laughs> Big red flag. You know, I know he loves me, but I just can't trust him. Love is always trusting. I really, I really love her, but man, uh, I don't know if I can really fully support her and what she's going after in life. Love is always supporting. Love is always loyal. God's got a lot to say, doesn't he, on becoming the right person instead of looking for the right person. And I know we kind of scan through a little bit of this in 1 Corinthians, and, and, and as, a, as a single person, I, I heard messages like these, you know, and I, I remember hearing about, you know, some different approaches to like, don't do this, do that, and all this stuff, and it just kind of seemed overwhelming, right? Kind of seemed like impossible to do, especially when I was in high school and like early stages of college, I was like, this is this is a lot. Like, always? Always supportive? Like, always loyal? You know, you get that high pitch. Like, yeah, from this day forward, I didn't really know what I was agreeing to 13 and a half years ago, that I'm always going to love my wife and be loyal and supportive and hopeful and trusting of her and, and not keeping a you know, record of wrongs and not being envious and being kind and patient. And that's what love is. And so regardless if you're in a relationship or not, you can practice this. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you know, with all of your relationships about loving one another. God said to love him and to love people. That's the greatest commandment. So there really isn't like this special type of marriage love. There's just loving each other and then it becomes in this marriage union that is special and unique. And Paul, who's writing this letter to the Corinthians, kind of wraps up this little segment in a different way than I would have normally expected. He says this in verse 11. He goes on, he says, When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. We were just talking about love. What are you talking about? But when I grew up, I put away childish things. He's saying, when I grew up, I began to apply as I learned and grew and understood who God was and what it means to love somebody. He's like, I began to put away the childish mindset. I actually began to apply what I learned to my life and to my relationships. That growing up is a, continually, uh, a continual process. And, and he's, he's not saying he's got it perfect or that it's dialed in. I, please, if you hear me say that I've got marriage figured out or that I'm perfect in any of this, you're mishearing me this morning. But I do understand that as I'm growing up, I'm applying what it means to love somebody and love somebody really well. And I'm putting away my childish mindset. I'm putting away my childish expectations, which I really think in our culture in this day and age means putting away trying to find and hunt for the right person and believing in that myth and, and really grabbing on to becoming the person that God wants me to be and grabbing on to God's truth of what it means to really love somebody and to continually grow in that and move forward in my love for for, for, for my wife and for my kids and for, for all people. And not to say that like when my kids, who are children, I got five and eight and 10-year-old, and, and when they say, Dad, I love you, I think they fully mean it. I think they really, you know, at their age-appropriate level go, that's, I love you. Are they always loyal and supportive and patient? You know what I mean? Like, no. Like, <laughs> but I think as best as they can, they're saying that. So single people, I don't want you to get discouraged by this message, trying to help, trying to, to encourage, trying to maybe set aside some of those fears that you have of, of getting married again or to, to reconcile in a relationship that you're strained or separated from, that you would move towards this target. Because he goes on, Paul says in, in verse 12, he goes, all that I know now is partial and incomplete. All right. How many of your marriage, marriage people, how many of you feel partial and incomplete? You don't have to raise your hand. All right. Like, he's like, it's not going to be perfect, people. <sighs> All right. Take a deep breath. Ready? Relax a little bit. It's not going to be perfect. And he's talking to more than marriage here. He's talking about love and in our whole life. But he says, but then I will know everything completely, just as God knows me completely. He's talking about all of life, that, that life now is just kind of partial. 
It's just kind of incomplete as we understand our relationship with God. That's one of the beautiful things about marriage is it gives us an insight of our relationship with God and the dynamic we have that we're going to have with him and have with him currently and in the future reality of heaven. You may not know this, maybe you do. Uh, God refers to us as his bride. Yes, us, us dudes as well. <laughs> but us, the, the church, the, all the people that are gathered as his followers, like we're the bride of Jesus. And so it helps us understand in, in a marriage relationship how God and us have this special connection, a special union. So it's, it's partial and incomplete now, but we're going to do our best. We're going to move towards that. Gives us a glimpse of what it could, could be like and should be like, what it means to love one another. So it's bigger than just marriage, but it includes that. And so it's today, single people. Today is your present, which will soon be your past, which will show up in your future. All we have from this day forward is today. That will soon be our past. And whatever we put in today... Sowing in with love and being patient and kind and, and quit focusing on trying to find the right person and believe in that myth and I'm going to change my thinking and my life and become the right person because I'm going to you know, you know, take in what God has to say about that. That will soon be in my past, which will show up in my future. It will be a beautiful, wonderful thing as Darian short shared her story. So from this day forward, that's all we really have. And real practically, and again, I hope, hope you don't hear me say, I'm, I know I'm doing a lot of caveats here because I don't want to pretend or, or give the impression even that I got this figured out or that I did uh, the process of dating and engagement and getting married perfectly or have anything dialed up. I'm just trying to help, and uh, if you're single, trying to help you to have a, a wonderful start and the best possible start you can to a relationship, to engagement, to a marriage that just hopefully save you from some of the junk and the turmoil and the chaos that you don't have to go through that. that that's, that's what us old people do, right? You're like, you're like, I just wish the young people would follow what I you know, say, not what I did, right? That's what we just, as I get older, that's kind of what we scream more and more. And so I don't have it nailed, but I do hope you hear from God and the God's spirit works inside of you and motivates you. So here's just a few real practical things. If, if the whole love thing didn't work out for you and that didn't quite, let me just give you some real practical things about what today your present, which will soon be your past, which we all know shows up in our future, about is becoming the right person. A few practical things. Follow Jesus. Follow God. If you're not a God follower, I encourage you, invite you to follow him. Like we sang and celebrated earlier, it's a free gift of salvation. God just says, give your life to me, and then you have grace and redemption and forgiveness of your sins and eternal life in a future that's bright and promising and hopeful. So follow Jesus. God created us. He designed us. Like relationship is the thumbprint on your soul. Like you are built for it. And God said, let man and woman come together. It's his idea, Marriage relationships, the dynamic of two becoming one, the special union that happens between a man and a wife. Like follow Jesus in that, follow his principles, what it means to love. God is love. And that's, as we went through 1 Corinthians, that's how God loves us. And Jesus said, love others as I have loved you. Like that's the platinum principle. So follow him. Your marriage will be tons better. Your relationships will be tons better. They'll be like the way they're designed to be. And They'll give you the power to do it and the desire to do it. Here's the next thing in becoming the right person is clean out the closet. And what I mean by that is we all have stuff stored away in our lives, in our baggage, in our hurts, in our pains, in our past. Begin to work on those things. The person you're looking for isn't looking for somebody with a ton of, of hurts and pains and garbage in, in, the, in their past that they're not willing to deal with. I'm not saying you have to be perfect. I'm not saying you have to get it all cleaned out. But be a person who's willing to let the, the things that show up from the past, that show up in your present day, right, that those are things you're going to work on and deal with and overcome, that you're not going to carry past hurts from previous relationships. And if a boy's hurt you before and then the second boy hurt you and then the third boy hurt you and then you got really hurt, that, that your expectation as you show up with the next person is like, well, you're going to hurt me because all these other people have hurt me. And you instantly put that on person in a relationship. That's not a great start to a marriage. It's not a great start to an engagement. It's not even a good start to like a friendship or, you know, dealing with a cashier at Arby's. I mean, it's just not a, it's really not a good start for anything. You don't have to have it perfect. You don't have to have it all clean, but be willing to work on it. 
And then just a sidebar here, maybe this is something for somebody this morning. I feel like God had said to say this. Uh, it, it, it doesn't, it relates, but sometimes the enemy likes to bring things up in our past and you just need to tell them to shut up and other inappropriate words I can't say up here. <laughs> because they're not true, because you're forgiven, because it's been dealt with. No longer shame because of Jesus. So be willing to deal with it, but then there's times and there's things it's been dealt with. So that's the dealing of it, is saying, I'm done with that. Okay, I'm moving on. Another thing about, real practically about becoming the right person is just stay out of debt. How many of you, if you're single, you don't have to raise your hand, are really looking for somebody like in like six-figure debt? <laughs> Seven-figure debt. Anybody? Okay. So if, if you're not looking for somebody with like, $50,000 in credit card spending and then they just want to keep living that way and then the right person is going to come along and magically erase all of that and then change their whole habits. Okay, that's, yeah, exactly. And then the last one, real, real practically, just stay out of bed. Get a good night's sleep, but by yourself. Yeah, it's not popular, it's not our culture. We think we should test drive before you buy, Right? It's not how sex is designed. We're going to talk about sex next week, Father's Day, men. We're going to talk about how beautiful and wonderful and powerful it is and how God designed it. It's a great thing, and it's been perverted and distorted and corrupted and tainted with, like, negativity, but it's a positive, beautiful thing. We're going to talk about that all next week, okay? But just to stay out of bed, you're, you're designed for intimacy with two people, and there's more sexual chemistry and passion when people haven't been with a lot of partners, I mean, there's, you, could, you could study that and research that. It's not, it's not, it's not something like, oh, if you're more experienced, you're going to be better. It's, there's, a, there's security and intimacy that happens when it's, you haven't been with a ton of partners. So becoming the right person, if you're single now, you're not married, stay out of bed until you get married. And again, I know the struggle. I know the tension of like becoming the right person sounds like idealistic. Sounds like impossible. But with Jesus, we have from this day forward. You can't go past and in the, in the past and change everything. But you have from this day forward. So what are you going to choose to do? Where are you going to go? Who are you going to become? Are you going to become the person, the person who you are looking for is looking for? We have from this day forward. Allow God to redeem and restore and change your heart and change your mind and allow your thought process about what it means to be single, your thought process about, thought process about dating and engagement and marriage and what that looks like. Let, allow him to change that and restore things and redeem things. And as the past pops up, deal with it or not deal with it. You know, make, make decisions now that will show up in your future that are, that are sowing great things, that will are, that are reap a harvest of, of good and of fruit in your life and of positive things. It's amazing, like in Darian's story, amazing what three years can do in your life as she began to make changes and allow God to work in her life and restore things and redeem things, and it's a beautiful thing to, today. So who are you becoming? Are you becoming the person the person you're looking for is looking for? I hope so. I hope you join me in that as again as a married person I'm continually wanting to become the person Amy's continually looking for and our commitment to one another so let's pray Jesus we're thankful that you